The headphone jack isn't dead, it's just sleeping. It's like Scar. It's such a cheap addition to anything. Mate, she's never far away from a comeback. So Apple adding a headphone jack and quality digital audio converter would actually be an amazing feature outshining the competition nowadays. Jack and Jack, Jack and Jack, Jack and Jack. Oh my pucks out! Eggs and sausages everywhere. But oh well, <laughs> because it means that other companies can see the obvious desire for reliable cable headphones with Bluetooth convenience. Oh, but first, mate, like we're gonna talk about the, the dingus pod again. Um, that one. Never thought this idiot would be a collectible so soon. <laughs> and proof that the headphone jack can fit almost anywhere. Look, it actually breaches the shape of the chassis. Doing some research and learning that most people don't care, but it seems the output power of the iPod Touch is about 30 milliwatts. I mean, that's how much you can scream out of this hole here. So let's bring out the first nugget and the daddy to this genre, mate, the BTR5. I know I overuse the word nugget, usually meaning something subpar, like Tony, what a nugget. But in in this case, it's literally nugget size and it's super in what it can do. And that makes it a super nugget. And Fio's been at this for a really long time. Here's my proof, mate. <laughs> they were making stuff for the 30 pin iPod and iPhone. But what is this and why don't you care? Well, um, it's a pocketable headphone amplifier and audiophile DAC. It's a jack and DAC. Jack and DAC! But the big kicker, it turns your cabled headphones into Bluetooth ones with an audiophile DAC and amp. So you get all the freedom of using your phone without cables hanging out of it while not having to use headphones with batteries in them they are going to die one day. Now I can hear you guys chuckling up the back because like this has a battery in it. You know, so you're going like, Poor, so, your, so your headphones don't have a battery mate but your expensive DAC nugget does so that's going to die anyway. Ah, oh, but that's the thing. It's also a USB DAC, meaning you could plug it into your computer, laptop, even your Nintendo Switch, anything that outputs USB audio and become its sound card. I mean, audiophile grade Breath of the Wild. Use it for gaming or maybe all your big audio files live on your PC. And having a hard connection is really, really handy. I like to make music. I swear I'm working on a dankness track. And this would be a great travel accessory to run editing headphones out on site on a laptop. Because with Bluetooth, there's a very slight latency when you do something and when you hear it. I mean, it's fractions of a second. It really doesn't matter for content or whatnot. But when you're editing and creating something, it's very distracting. Uh, well, let's talk power. It is an amp after all. The Dingus Pod Touch, mate, she cranks out 30 milliwatts out of the, the big sound hole. This guy, 80 milliwatts. But, but no, 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 shut up. That's just this headphone jack. This tiny one is balanced output. Basically, it sends the audio down two wires instead of one. It helps eliminate noise and other stuff that ruins hi-fi. But um, this is where it's hiding all of its stinky power. Uh, because that little dingus has 240 milliwatts. <laughs> I, I suck at explaining amplifiers. The dumbest I've gone to say is they just convert ones and zeros into music. And it's technically what they do. Digital music is ones and zeros. But it's like a graphics card in gaming. They're doing the same job, like trillions of ones and zeros turning into like a video on a screen. It's just a processor crunching numbers. In PCs with graphics, it's called a GPU. And in audio, it's called a DAC. So the DAC decodes the audio file and then the amplifier boosts the signal and sends it out the headphone jack. But you're like, what does a good DAC and amp do? Well, to me, it feels like a music in beginner. <laughs> There's more space between the instruments. And on top of this, like the lows go lower. There's more details in the super high end and the extra output can make it just seem effortless out of big headphones. Mate, I'm getting off track from the nuggets. And it's like, well, the BTR5 is the daddy. It's not alone in the field, mate. Enter the iFi Go Blue. This thing is tiny and it weighs nothing. I mean, the BTR5 is tiny and look at it. It is thicker, but not by heaps. I love the button and dial combo, that's nice. But even though it's tiny, look, it's got the big 4.4 balanced output. That's fun, not the two and a half that this guy has. Does the same job as the little one. I do prefer the bigger jack. It just seems less likely to snap off if the cable gets snagged. And my, she may be tiny, but power output out of the standard jack, 165. Yeah, and the balance output is 245. So only a little bit extra peak power over the BDR5, but the standard jack is way stinkier. So it's tinier, has bigger jacks, has more power. What's the downside? Well, it costs more. The BTR5 is about 200 and the Go Blue is 300. It's not quite as clever. I mean, like the BTR5 has like the simple little screen. 
Isn't that nice? It has stuff like car mode. Like, if your car has an aux jack, you can permanently leave it in your car on charge and it'll turn on and off with your car. You can even opt to not charge to save the battery if it just lives on the cable the whole time. And it's not like the cheaper BTR5 is nasty. It reminds me of like a Galaxy S6. It's like glass and aluminium, like curved glass, that. I'd like to think in a drop that the iFi has a better chance of bouncing or just denting rather than shattering. But the BTR5 comes with a swanky belt clip. It's actually like the best accessory for this kind of guy. iFi does have a case though, like with a, with a clip guy on it. But anyway, so for more power and like size advantage, you go for the iFi. But for more value, you go the BTR5. But the BTR5's here going like, you mate, like you got more power than me in like a smaller package with arguably like the better the better headphone jacks and like I do like the wheel. No screen though. But like if it's about power, mate, you wait till my older brother gets here, mate. Cause like he's the big guy, mate. You better you gotta have to talk to him, eh? You've been picking on my little brother, mate. Hey? Eh? Yeah. It's the BTR7. It's basically a big chungus BTR5. And like, amps for the most part don't aim to change how the music sounds, but they do have subtle flavors, and amp connoisseurs say that the vibe of these two is really similar. You know, which is to say it sounds awesome. There's great stuff in this. But let's talk output power, right? The standard jack has a little less power than the iFi at 160 milliwatts, but the balanced, 320 milliwatts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got the big 4.4 balance output. My favorite, it's got a big screen. Look at that. It's not high res or anything, but it's it's good. Like you're not watching SpongeBob, man. So don't worry. Um, it is huge. It is a it is a big lad. But it only costs 20 bucks more than the i5. Mm. It's got car mode as well, and even a dedicated switch, whether or not you want it to charge from the battery when it's on USB connection or not. It doesn't come with a clip, but you do get this nice slip-on case, which I do recommend using, cause ouch, this guy be pointy. It's made really nice. It's just pointy and chunky and really big. Uh, one grumble from me is that I wish it also had the small two and a half mil balanced as well, just to make up for the really big kind of chunk of this. And I know price is a point, manufacturing costs, but I think it would have made it the ultimate all rounder because I've got some headphones that only have a 2.5 balance. And Fio are not afraid to put every jack on their device. You know, their flagship M17. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, for those curious, uh, the standard 3.5 output, 500 milliwatts, and the balance output is 1,100, 1.1 watts. I really like this thing. But back to the BTR7. This guy is chunk, but it would be a cool choice of something that spends a lot of time being used, say, with a PC, or as an external sound card in a desktop config, or maybe it goes in the bag with your professional editing laptop so you can boost the headphones that you're using out on site. But honestly, like, you can't go wrong with any of these. Like, I, there's no one better than the other. Uh, because uh, there is one more twist that these guys do that makes them really useful. They have microphones in them. So not only does it make your cable headphones connect wirelessly, you can have phone calls with them and use digital assistance too. So at this one time, mate, like I realized people are pretty keen on having clean air, like air purifiers and things. And then I'm like, why hasn't someone made flavored air? Like imagine Doritos flavored air and like blue Gatorade flavored air. And like, I wonder why no one's cracked onto this hay and like, seems like a bit of a cash cow. So mate, my flavored air business has taken off pretty dang good, mate. Like I've already got heaps of investors, mate, like millions of dollars worth. Uh, they are concerned with the amount of yield that I'm outputting, mate. Like, you know, it's, it takes quite a long time for me to develop this process. I've got plans on expanding it to get more of it out there. You know, people are complaining of like a, a slight bad aftertaste, you know, but like, I'll work it out. It's it's totally fine, mate. Like, revolutionary product, hey, I'm going to be a millionaire. So, like, my business is in ruins, hey, because, like, people just kind of found out that, like, I've just been eating Doritos and, like, burping in a bag, mate. Same with the Powerade. And my plans to upscale was just hiring more of my mates to do the same. And, it, like, then it kind of explained the bad aftertaste. And, like, I'm pretty sure... I'm going to jail. Making phone calls with Grados is very, very enjoyable. 
Although the mic sounds like the typical Bluetooth affair. <laughs> Even bootleg iPod knockoff buds have a better inline mic and that's the beauty of cables. But still, this is what all these brand new cutting edge, high speed, crazy little processors are giving us. These little devices can decode data that used to take like rack mounted modules in a studio for under 200 bucks. Wirelessly. I'm just not really into Bluetooth. It just gets annoying just because I like having lots of different headphones because I'm spoiled trash. And I totally get that it's nice to use your phone and not have something hanging out the end of it. And for me, this is a great solution. But you know, I also understand that folks working in particular industries can't have cables due to spinning machines and risk of entanglement or death. Um, but to sum it up on these guys, for the best value for money, like it's hard to beat the BDR5. Like it's a really great package for its size, the clip, the modes, the little screen, it's so useful. But the weirdo enthusiast in me loves the iFi. The extra power out of it with the standard jack is appreciated as I love using old headphones and not all of them are balanced. The size and weight is hilarious. It's just a nice thing to look at, especially with its huge 4.4 jack. And the BTR7 is the option if like you want a super cheap amp to leave plugged into a setup. Like it's 100% portable if need and will travel well with professional laptop and gear to help drive reference headphones on site. They look like toys, but man, these things punch well way above their weight. <laughs> it's amazing. These products have only just boinked into existence recently. I'm just happy to get the word out about them. And look, if you want to go stinkier than this, mate, it's called You Get A Cord Mojo or the Ideas D Diablo. It's made by iFi as well. So, but there's more of them out there than just these. It's awesome to see this becoming a little category. They're like the dub as like audio super nugs. But now you have a reference of price for power and features as you stumble across any in your own travels. And so I just want to say, Thanks for another year, guys. I super appreciate you. I want to wish everyone a happy Christmas. It's Christmas. Merry Crisis and Merry Chrysler. And well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here. Because, mate, $1 a month. I direct your videos. There are extra videos on Garbage Time, my car channel thing, and the drum thing, which is my drum thing, and I stream on Float Plane. But, mate, you folks who want extra dank pods for one buck extra, well, as I just said, it's Christmas, and so let's do a Hallmark <laughs> Christmas nugget. <laughs> uh, magic. It's called electricity, Hallmark. Let's have a look at this Christmas nug and wonder why no one decided to buy it since 2007. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time.